Ladies and gentlemen, the youngest firing professionals, welcome to the third episode of the 12-man podcast. Today we are entering another new realm and uh, we are completely stepping off the path of uh, sports marketing and uh, fan engagement and we are going more into the sports science and uh, medical field uh, as uh, I'm here with someone who uh, whose job occupation may be not one of the most common ones and the most known ones but it's also an incredibly important field and I'm very happy to welcome here with me all the way from the Turkish capital city of Ankara uh, sports pharmacist uh, Erem Ergec. Erem, welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. Hello, Christoph. Super happy to have you here. Uh, this episode is actually going to be con uh, con the concept of the episode is a bit different than uh, we are used to from uh, episode one and two. Uh, so for the first time ever, we're actually introducing an introductory round. Um, so also for you to get Aram, uh, to get to know Aram a bit better, we're going to ask her uh, three starter questions, and uh, after that, uh, you might already build uh, an image of Aram in your head, uh, thinking of uh, how did she enter the industry, and uh, we can also then be talking about her job a bit more but let's kick it off with the with the first three starter questions are you ready <laughs> yes i am perfect let's go uh, the first question uh, i have prepared for you is and i we want to know what did you what did you study in school i studied pharmacy uh, i studied pharmacy at the hacettepe university which is the uh, best one in the medical sciences in turkey yeah, i started pharmacy Okay. Do you have a bachelor degree, or a, I'm sorry, I'm a complete, uh, I'm a complete noob when it comes to when it comes to medical. So uh, I know people listening right now will be absolutely uh, thinking like, well, what is he talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about this time. But <laughs> what is your, what is your actually, what is your degree? It's a kind of a mix of a bachelor degree and a master degree because I also uh, did a thesis before I graduate. So I kind of did a bachelor and master together in okay. pharmacy okay nice one Irem what was your first job uh to be honest I uh, first my first job was uh being a pharmacist of course because I only uh, worked after I graduate uh, I was working in a ministry of health in Turkey and I was in uh, charge of Mm, purchasing medical stuff like drugs and I mean the medications and vaccines etc to the hospitals uh, which is too which is totally irrelevant to my sports pharmacy job but it, I was working in a ministry of health uh, in the beginning of my career okay and uh, when it comes to your biggest drives your biggest inspiration do you have somebody you consider to really be something or someone who motivates you to do what you're doing? Yes, it's, it's going to be a little bit uh, emotional, but my mother is my biggest uh, inspiration because he is the strongest woman I've ever uh, known. So uh, I'm she is also a pharmacist and I grow up in her pharmacy store. So uh, she she is my biggest inspiration. Of course, there are lots of uh, big athletes in the sports world, uh, but to be honest, my mom is the biggest one. That's super nice, and uh, also I uh, see kind of an overlap in the first episode where Semra uh, she also said that uh, her mother was uh, the main drive. So. Uh, it's good. Uh, it's good to hear uh, that that uh, you guys have uh, amazing, amazing mothers. So uh, let's send uh, let's send uh, another shout out to to Irem's to Irem's mom. Uh, <laughs> I hope that you were able to uh, build a picture of Irem in your head that you kind of uh, know who she is and uh, how she uh, started, what she studied, and whose inspiration. Now we actually entering the main uh, stage of the podcast, so uh, we can talk a bit more about uh, the function of sports pharmacist. And uh, to be honest, it's a field that might be quite confusing for many people. Can you maybe explain the term of sports pharmacy? What uh, what is it? Uh, 
I can guess that too too many people are hearing the sports pharmacy or sports pharmacist terms uh, for the first time. Uh, actually, sports pharmacy is a brand new uh, spe specialization uh, in pharmacy world. Uh, but first, uh, pharmacist uh, who helps athletes maintain their health and help them perform at their best level is a sports pharmacist. Of course, you need to uh, know drugs and supplements and uh, athlete health, all the exercise, physiology, uh, biochemistry, etc. But also you need to know what the athletes and the teams are, they, they, what you need to know their needs to help them and provide a solution to their problem. Is it clear uh, enough for you? I think, uh, I think it's pretty uh, clear for me. I also hope it's uh, it's clear for uh, for our for our audience. Yeah, as I said, uh, this episode is going to be uh, a bit uh, a bit different, also uh, because of uh, of my background and my uh, almost zero understanding of of uh, medical things. But I still hope that uh, it will be uh, insightful enough. And that Irem will still be able to uh, to spread uh, to spread her message and insights. Uh, when it comes to how we actually do this podcast, uh, at this point, uh, what I usually ask is, uh, how did you get into the industry? But uh, what we uh, actually did on our social media uh, yesterday was uh, that we let uh, our uh, audience, our viewers, and our followers on Instagram ask uh, some questions to uh, Irem and uh, one of them is kind of overlapping with this uh, whole entering of the sports industry but uh, it is more uh, maybe the question is more specific and it's more re uh, re rephrased uh, so uh, I'm gonna ask that question to you right now it's a uh, it's a question from uh, Alexandra Alexandra is asking which experience has helped you to enter the sports industry or maybe which aspects uh, help you to to choose your career path oh i i love that question and when i heard this question as a specific moment comes to my mind i remember the moment that i uh, discovered sports pharmacy i was in a congress a pharmacy congress and there was someone who's uh, talking about sports pharmacy but uh, back then I mean in uh, 2016 uh, there was no practice in the field as a sports pharmacy so when I first heard about the sports pharmacy concept it was just it, it was just like love at first sight at back that moment I knew that it was this was something uh, that I must do and there was no other way for me so I had no other choice to be uh, something else other than a sports pharmacist. Uh, I mean, I love my job. I'm so passionate about it. So when I first heard of it, I uh, tried to make some research on it. I tried to discover uh, what to do, what, what a sports pharmacist do, uh, and how can I become a best one, become the best one in the world. And um, I, since then, it's been like uh, eight or seven years, and I'm still pursuing uh, my dreams. And hopefully this year I will, I want to be in the Olympics as a sports pharmacist. So uh, one of my biggest dreams uh, will, uh, will, will become, t become true. So such a nice uh, and inspirational inspirational story and uh we also all hope that uh, that you make it there to the olympics and that uh, that uh, your dreams will indeed come true uh, maybe now that you already started talking about the topic of uh, of the olympic games uh, is a sports pharmacist uh, actually already a function there like a role of somebody on the team uh, on the medical team so for example you are working with turkish athletes uh is it your actual role in the Turkish Olympic team, the sports pharmacist? Mm -hmm. uh, not officially yet. Uh, for now, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, sports pharmacists and me is working individually with athletes. Uh, I mean, we console them individually, 
Uh, sometimes there are some teams who want to work with sports pharmacists, but it's a little bit uh, different to position them between a, a team physician and a team dietitian. So it's not too common in the practice. I mean, I don't know any sports pharmacist who officially works in a sports pharmacy position. Of course, there are some exceptions, uh, especially in the United States, because United States and the UK is the main countries that uh, leads the sports pharmacy. Uh, there are there may some ex examples there, but it's not too common to have a sports uh, sports pharmacist in a team. But I'm sure uh, it it will happen in the future. Uh, that uh, with that being said, is there a chance uh, uh, that uh, we all uh, will see you on the? on the boat in Paris during the opening ceremony of the Olympics with the other athletes. Yes, yes. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, yes. Well, because that would be, be very I cool. I believe that I have so much to offer to the athletes, yeah. That would be very, that'd be very nice. Uh, maybe also reflecting on the, uh, on the athletes now, what types of athletes do you personally work with? Okay, um, the athletes that I work with is uh, in a very wide range. I work with young athletes, uh, elderly athletes, I mean the master degree athletes, um, about, about 40 or maybe more. And I work with um, young athletes that has just started their professional career and the very elite ones, the Olympic level athletes too. So uh, I work too many types of athletes but my favorite ones are the young ones because I've always loved children and I it's it's so uh, easier for me to bond with them and it's it's a scientific fact that once you have a bond and connection with them it's easier uh, them to um, believe and uh, practice what you say to them what you advise to them so it's another way uh, for me to uh, be a better uh, sports pharmacist. I want to uh, be in a re really good relationship with my clients and with my athletes. Uh, I don't have this question prepared on my list, but I'm still going to ask it uh, because uh, I know that when it comes to working with uh, really young children, it's uh, not uh, something that uh, is particularly easy. Uh, I'm gonna mention uh, my mother, who has a background in uh, in this. She's a uh, she's uh, she has she's her whole career. She's been working um, as a teacher with the very smallest of, of children. What's the difference between working uh, with uh, young children and then uh, all of a sudden the next day Olympic athletes? What's the difference? Most of the time, the working with adults are ju just like about job. I mean, even if they are love their sports, they are just doing their job. Most of them uh, has lost their passion and they are eager to perform. Uh, but the young ones are still so full of joy and full of love of sports. You know, they are just uh, full of life. So it's it's it makes me happier and it makes me uh, more more alive uh, when I'm working with them. Are there maybe any specific characteristics uh, when it comes to Olympic athletes? When you say, well, this is really what makes them different uh, than from uh, than from uh, other clients, other clients of yours. Uh, Olympic athletes or the top level athletes, even if they are not in Olympic level yet, you know, as I told you, uh, I work with young athletes and uh, there are some specific ones that you can easily um, select from from the from the group. So the the main reason that that they are different is uh, they dream big and uh, they do whatever it takes. I mean, whatever it takes. I mean, in any condition, uh, for example, if even if you do, you're going to wake up at 3 a.m. and swim like five kilometers, they would do it. They don't question. They don't 
mind the pain they feel. They don't mind the uh, obstacles in the way. They just do whatever it takes. And this discipline and this mindset is uh, the thing that I really admire. So I, I believe that uh, the, this is the reason why Olympic athletes are so, uh, so, so um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, no worries. No worries. No, no worries. Uh, but it's the winner is, mentality. It's the winner mentality. That yes, this is, this is what Olympic athletes make so admirable. So, uh, yeah, they are so disciplined and they are willing to do whatever it takes, even if it's so hard, even if they cause too much pain. Yeah, that's it. Yes, spill the beans. Come on. Who are the biggest names you've uh, you've uh, worked with or you can tell uh, these, are, like, no, these are my clients? Uh, I'm not sure that it, it would be okay for me to share this one, but uh yeah maybe we're we getting into yeah we got into the gray area apparently so let's uh yeah, let's yes. get out of the gray area now sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> uh from olympic athletes now let's go back to people like uh, us go back to the mortals uh when it comes to uh pharmacy so there have to be some supplements or some uh, drugs uh people use to to be fitter be more in shape or just uh keep healthy what would you recommend uh if uh, i say well i want to i want to get into shape what type of uh of supplements i should use according to you as a sports pharmacist okay that's a great question and I get this question a lot because not uh, everyone is a professional athlete, but uh, there are lots of people around that who just works out and try to live healthy. And I work with them too. And um, <clears throat> helping these people, hel helping all the population is one of my responsibilities. So uh, first of all, I, might, I want to say that there are no short shortcuts to achieve any goals. I mean, uh, you need to do the workout if you want to gain muscle. You need to uh, cut your calories if you want to lose weight. And besides all the nutrition and the workouts that you should obey, that you should practice, uh, there are some supplements that you, uh, can help you uh, during the process. First of all, everyone... Uh, should take some tests like blood test and urine test and after the test results you need to you will monitor your general health for example if your organs are or systems are healthy if they are healthy you can uh, start to use some uh, supplements for example if if you have some deficiency like b12 vitamin or iron or uh, vitamin d uh, deficiency or folic acid deficiency you need to uh, use this kind of supplements first even if you have no deficiency you can still use supplements in a lower doses just to um just to help you intake that kind of um mic micros so uh, after that you can use magnesium you can use uh, omega-3 you should use uh, probiotics, especially if you have used any antibiotics in the last one year. You should totally use probiotics. And other than uh, the other supplements are totally uh, specific to a person. For example, if you need some energy, you need to feel uh, more energized during the day. You can use uh, coenzyme Q10 or coenzyme Q hash or... Um, if you are having a problem uh, with taking enough protein with your diet, you can always use uh, whey protein uh, powders. Uh, I mean, um, other than uh, there, there are there is a belief that the taking protein supplements are very dangerous and but it's too risky. But uh, it's it's not really. If you are using a right amount of protein powder and if you are using a really quality brand, uh, there, there are not uh, too much risk in it. And I 
recommend everyone who works out and who cannot provide their protein with, uh, the nutri with nutrition. So they can use uh, protein powders as well if they need any other, uh, if they need any other specific um, needs. There are lots of supplements to, uh, that I can uh, recommend to them. Is there maybe something, uh, a particular supplement that is very dangerous and people really should not use? Weight loss supplements. Weight loss supplements because there are no miracle weight loss ingredients and most of the weight loss supplements are just fake ones or very low quality uh, ones. So it's, it's too risky to uh, take uh, weight loss supplements and most of people has diet just because of it so what would you say that is the biggest risk of 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 taking a weight loss supplement is actually death yes of course and lots of uh, organ damage That's, now you completely caught me off guard. I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't expecting to to go into such a dark area here. But obviously, <laughs> it's uh, it's always uh, it's always uh, good to uh, to also know about about the risks uh, of uh, of supplements. Uh, Iram, we are uh, getting to to the final to the final uh, point of uh, of our podcast. I still interested though. Uh, you already kind of uh, kind of uh, talked about this in the beginning, but when it comes to the future uh, and your goals, so obviously now the Paris 2024 Olympics, but after that, uh, how do you want your career to continue? Uh, uh, th this is this is the first time I'm sharing this, but uh, at first I'm working on an online course that. Uh, that will educate people in sports pharmacy area, for example, drug use in sports, both in medication purposes or uh, performance enhancements uh, purposes, I mean doping, and uh, supplement use in sports, athlete health, this kind of stuff. And uh, besides sports nutrition, sports psychology, all the tools that an athlete needs uh, during their journey i want to i'm working on to create an online course about it um and second of all i want to create a safer place especially for for the little athletes or little uh, children to play sports one of them is one of them is um uh I want to create awareness about supplement usage. Uh, there are lots of uh, problems in supplement industry. Not all of them are having the same exact ingredients that on the label. So this is a huge problem. And uh, I want to create a um, create a solution to this one, especially in the Turkey. Uh, thir third party certification is a great solution for it. I mean, I recommend everyone who's taking supplements to use that third for third party certification supplements especially nsf sports or um, informed sports are great uh, third party certification brands i i totally um, recommend this one now i want to create a similar uh, solution in turkey too and one of my other uh, one of the other uh, dreams I have is I want to I want to make the sports industry uh, more doping free. I don't know if if it's too too hard for for an individual, but uh, especially in the for the people in the gym. In the Olympic level, it might be harder because the performance they need to uh, perform is too much, and sometimes. For some athletes, uh, using doping is inevitable. It's not a choice, but uh, at least for the non-professional ones, I want to make non-professional sports world doping free. And I believe that pharmacists have a huge role in that. That could be a very good, uh, very good potential topic for another for another episode of the podcast. Just talk about doping, yes. uh, and I'm sure we can make it happen in the future. Uh, also, 
incredible, incredible uh, mission you're working uh, towards now. Uh, best of luck in that. Uh, we all hope that, uh, that, and we are sure that you're going to make it and you're going to succeed. Thank you. Yeah, um, the way we end this podcast is we have one signature question and we ask this to oh, okay. absolutely everyone so you are also you are also not going to not going to escape this uh because we are mainly looking to uh to motivate and to inspire uh, people wanting to enter this sports industry i would like to ask you what kind of advice would you give to to youngsters to rookies who want to enter the industry uh okay uh first of all it's it's i think it's really important uh, to find something that you really want to do because otherwise the process will be so hard whatever you do whatever you choose to do the process is getting to somewhere is too hard and if it's not something you like or something you love uh that hardships are possibly get you out of the way so it's important that it's uh, your goal your job is something you like or something you love and other than that uh, besides having a goal you need to be willing to do whatever it takes I think this is too critical because most of the people are not so aware of it because everyone wants to have a Lamborghini for example but not everyone has a um, enough money to buy it or enough which means not everyone is willing to work that hard i mean they want something but they are not willing to do whatever it takes to get it so after you want to have a goal uh, you need to know what you need to do to get there and you need to be willing to do it i think this is uh, too important and sometimes you need to create your own path because when I wanted to become a sports pharmacist there was there was no example in front of me there was no one that has done the things that I uh, want to do so sometimes uh, you need to create your own way and you need to be courageous to it wow. uh, incredible piece of advice Iram thank you so much for taking up the invitation and for coming to the 12 and podcast yeah, thank you so, so much for the invitation. Yeah, it was really great talking to you. Uh, thank you to all of you also for listening to the full episode of the Twine podcast. If you like this episode, make sure to follow us on our social media, mainly Instagram and our newly created TikTok channel. Also on our, your preferred podcast platform, whether that is Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And uh, we will definitely hear and see each other uh, next time uh, and then th and I can already reveal the next time will be pretty soon there are another amazing names uh, and uh, amazing names coming and uh, now I know we also have to do another episode of Irem about doping so uh, this is not the last time I hope that uh, we are s that we are seeing Irem in the podcast thank you so much for watching and uh, until next time keep kicking